So let's talk about descriptive and inferential statistics. Okay. So we see that statistics which is, if you remember, simply the science of data in many different forms, can be broken into two areas. One is called descriptive statistics, and the other is called inferential statistics. Now, descriptive statistics is an area of statistics where we are describing where are we describing patterns in the data in a convenient form. <clears throat> so an example would be looking at the number of males and females in a classroom. So we have a classroom, classroom right here. This is our classroom. Let's say in a classroom I have 15 males and 30 females. So if I state that there are 15 males and 30 females in a classroom, that would be an example of descriptive statistics. Another way to state that would be convert this into percentages. So the percentage of males you can calculate by taking the number of males and dividing by the total number of people in the classroom, which is 45, and that would give us one-third, or we could write that as 0.33, or if you like, if we multiply by 100%, that gives us 33%. So 33% of the students are males. Do the same thing for females. To calculate the percent of females, the first thing you do is you take the number of females and divide by the total number of students in the classroom, which is two thirds, which is 0.67. If we multiply that by 100%, we get 67%. So we can also say that there are, I guess I'll do it right here. There are 33% males and 67% females in the classroom. So again, the reason the reason that this is an example of descriptive statistics is all you're doing is you're describing something about the data you've collected and you're trying to do it in a convenient form, in a form which makes sense to the people that you're trying to convey the information to. Right. What is inferential statistics? Well, in inferential statistics, what we're doing is we're going to make estimates
generalizations. or predictions about a larger set of data based on data that we've collected from a subset. So what does that mean? Well, so let's say what we want to do is we want to use this information that we collected earlier to make some estimate, generalization, or prediction about all people in the US. So again, what we want to do is we want to use this information over here to make some prediction about the entire US population. Right. This information that we've collected is the sub subsets. So this is a classroom information. So the students that are in the classroom here are part of the U.S. population. So this classroom would be considered a subset of the U.S. population. So again, in differential statistics, what we want to do is we want to use this information right here, right, this information right here, to make some prediction, generalization, or estimate about the entire U.S. population. What percent of the entire U.S. population is male and what percent of the entire U.S. population is female. Okay, We can write that as follows. Okay. U.S. population has 33% male and 67% females. Now it's clear that this inference, this is called an inference if you like, this inference isn't very good because we know that in the U.S. population, about half of the people are male, half of the people are female. So we see that this is an example of a, a bad inference. Okay. Um, how can we make this inference better? Well, we can increase the number of students that are in our classroom. Okay. What we'll see is that what well, this 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 the information that we've collected here is an example of a sample. And over here on the right, the thing that we're trying to say something about is referred to as a population. So we're using this inference collected from the classroom to make a statement about the population. In this case, the inference is weak.